In an election this unpredictable, hard information is at a premium. Fortunately, there's a lot of it about. Detailed constituency polls are being carried out. Intelligence that in the past was the preserve of party HQs. And it all comes from one man. Now, I've always been fascinated in what makes a voter put the X where he or she does. Formerly a Tory donor, Lord Ashcroft is now reaching into his deep pockets to fund polling on a fairly epic scale. I'm not in the business of predicting. Uh, I think my mantra is that a poll is a snapshot, not a prediction. No snapshot has been more eagerly awaited than his first of Scotland, due to be published within days. The talk is that voters here are ready to administer a massive rebuff to Labour. Are you in a position yet to say whether or not you think this SNP surge is for real? Uh, yes, I believe it is real. So, dozens of Labour seats to turn SNP? Uh, one would expect uh, to see uh, a surge in the SNP, whether it's of the same magnitude as I've seen a few of the uh, pundits' uh, uh, forecasts uh, is yet to be seen. But we'll have a much clearer analysis. And the way he talks, you'd think Labour is being overrun. In Glasgow, for example, which has been a Labour stronghold area, had the greatest number of people voting for independence. Uh, at the, uh, the Scottish election. So you, you tend to want to ask why wouldn't they vote uh, for the SNP in the general election. Disaffection is driving voters into the arms of others too. Is this Westminster parties reaping what they sow? The Conservatives must take a large part of the credit uh, for the rise of UKIP in the way that they have handled the, the rise of that party. Um, so I believe the UKIP phenomena is both the arrogance of the Conservatives and the complacency of Labour that has given them the uh, position that they have. But this was something that was waiting uh, to happen. Lord Ashcroft declines to speculate as to how long this man will remain a fixture of our political life. However... Uh, it could be argued where UKIP uh, are concerned uh, that perhaps for their long-term interests a Miliband government is the best even though they would not get a refer or arguably wouldn't get a referendum on Europe because that would give UKIP another five years in which to build their party whilst they still have Europe as the bogey. His polling tends to show Labour ahead in Tory battleground seats we've visited in recent weeks like Cardiff North or Hendon. But Lord Ashcroft believes voters may demand more than just banging on about the cost of living for 98 more days. So what is the policy behind the cost of living crisis? Uh, we've already seen that the policy of the freezing of energy prices has gone away and most voters are able to see uh, the fact that the reduction in energy prices isn't anything to do with Labour, let alone the Conservative coalition. Uh, it's, it's a world phenomena. So what does, what is the policies behind it? And I think there's something lacking there. You can sense his scepticism about the current political crop. I believe that many politicians who seek the democratic mandate themselves do not know exactly what moves the X from one box to the other, though they believe they do. And I found that very fascinating to listen to politicians who believe that certain policies or things that they do uh, will persuade the voters to come to them, but yet when you go to speak to those groups of voters, it isn't correct. Not so long ago, you'd need 40-odd percent of the vote to govern here. More recently, parties have won with shares in the mid-30s. But Labour and the Tories are both in the low 30s now and falling. It is possible for someone now to have an overall majority uh, with a national vote share with a two in front of it. Do you think that v the voters would view that as acceptable, as legitimate? I think there would then be pressure as to whether first past the post is the appropriate system of government in the United Kingdom, but that again is another debate for another time. There could be a few of those big questions hanging over MPs by the time they return here in May. Joey Jones, Sky News.